Let's say that your team has finished the brainstorming process. During brainstorming, your team may have decomposed the problem into a number of functional parts or design blocks. Now you have incomplete design solutions. In engineering, there is a tool called a morphological chart or a morph chart that allows you to take these partially formed design ideas and combine them into full solutions. So a morph chart is a visual tool. It's essentially a table that lists different attributes and functions of your design. Using a morph chart allows you to compose complete design solutions from these partially formed ideas. So you want to start by sorting these incomplete design solutions into categories that reflect a unifying function or attribute. These functions or attributes are known as design blocks. So for an example, you might have a design block of handles. You might have a design block of ways to create motion. These design blocks should be high level and reflect the major parts and functions of your expected solution. So you'll make a table and list all of the design blocks or categories along the left-hand side. To fill in a morph chart, you list all of the ideas for a particular design block along that particular row. Now, for each design block, there should be a reasonable number of ideas, no more than six or eight. And each of the design blocks should be about the same level of detail. To use a morph chart, you use the following procedures. So you'll select one, none, or occasionally two ideas from each of the design blocks to compose a full design solution. So for example, let's take our water bottle. What design blocks are necessary in order to create a new water bottle? So pause the video, take a minute, and write down some of the ideas for the design blocks you would need to construct a water bottle. We identified a number of design blocks for the design of the water bottle. First, we considered the design block of the mouthpiece, right? because we had many ideas about how to design a new mouthpiece. We also considered the container, specifically the types of materials that the container could be made of. We considered a handle, how to hold onto the water bottle or attach it to a backpack. We also considered the diameter to height ratio, as well as the shape of the container. In most cases, when constructing a solution using a morph chart, we selected one option for each row. However, there are a few exceptions. Sometimes we skip a line. This is the same as putting none. For the design block of handle, none was an option, and it was selected for the metal water bottle and some others. Another example is the construction of the water pouch held like a backpack. Here, for the diameter to height ratio, none is not listed, but it doesn't make sense for a pouch. Therefore, we skipped it, which is the same as selecting none. Also, in some of the constructed solutions, we might want to select two options from the same row. For example, for our disposable water bottle, we selected both constant diameter and a ribbed texture. Morph charts can be a helpful tool to generate a lot of solutions, but it can be daunting when you think about how many solutions you can actually come up with. To get a feel for the approximate upper limit of solutions for any morph chart, multiply the number of options for each row. For our water bottle morph chart, this generates 1,224 solutions, which is many too many. Although this calculation gives you a large number of possible solutions, there are a number of them that just don't work. One example is that a twist top on a backpack is just simply impractical. It's also unreasonable to expect that your pouch, carried on your back like a dromedary, would be made of metal. Students often struggle with when to stop generating solutions using their morph charts. Your goal should be to generate enough solutions to get a broad and diverse range of the design space itself. And often this means 20 to 40 solutions which are representative, diverse, and creative. Morph charts give you no information on the utility of the solution. By that, we mean that there's no evaluation or ranking which would allow you to select the best solution. In summary, morph charts are a structured process which allow you to take component ideas and assemble them into full solutions. 
Morph charts can be very helpful for teams who, after following and finishing the brainstorming process, have too many incomplete ideas and need a method by which to assemble them into full solutions. After using a morph chart and assembling into full solutions, these ideas can then be evaluated.